Institute for Strategic Studies, Research and Analysis, Honorable Federal Ministers, Faculty Members, Academia, Government Officials, Participants of Security Workshop, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. It's really a great honor to be here and standing before you, galaxy of uh, experts in uh, various walks of life coming from universities, trade and industry, security, defense, and of course, Pakistan's uh, most important component, and that is how to define security in this day and age. I am very convinced that uh, our national security has direct linkage with economic security and both go hand in hand. I think today Pakistan, before I move forward, Aptapku Mubarak Baad, our stock exchange was 8 lakh points to cross. And I want to say بڑے عدب سے کہنا چاہتا ہوں اس میں میرا یا وزیر خزانہ کا یا ڈیپٹی پرائمٹر کا کمال نہیں ہے یہ ایک یقیناً it's a team effort untiring efforts no two opinions about it and of course very close coordination between the federal government and all stakeholders but it is all about uh, uh, sentiment, business sentiment. People uh, thought and they believed that Pakistan is slowly but surely moving in the right direction. And uh, the case in point is, day before yesterday, what was happening here in Islamabad, as a result of that uh, stock exchange, had a steep fall, probably the biggest fall in its history. It fell by 4,000 points. And, uh, and look at uh, uh, very quick rally. Yesterday, uh, again, it uh, jumped by more than 3,000 points. And today, it crossed 100,000 points. I think this is uh, the biggest uh, mark in Pakistan's history. So what I'm saying is that if we are economically strong, we have our uh, uh, exports growing, our uh, industrial base expanding, jobs, productive jobs being provided, bureaucracy efficient and agile, economic security will automatically strengthen our uh, Critical security and uh, vice versa. Unfortunately, and this is a fact of matter, and we should accept this uh, without any qualms, that over a period of time, spanning over decades, our uh, economic progress slowed down, rather deteriorated, and this was result of uh, various factors. One I've just explained and I did not uh, uh, go into details of it. Second, uh, policies which were not implemented uh, with uh, sincerity of purpose and with hard work and untiring efforts. Three, unfortunately, Despite uh, brilliant minds we have in this country and uh, some of them sitting in this hall, whether bureaucrats, professionals, uh, businessmen, teachers, professors, experts, on the whole, this uh, started declining in the previous decades. We need to have 
uh, very serious stock take. As I speak, we are still facing humongous challenges. You all know that uh, in June 2023, it was touch and go. Pakistan was uh, at the verge of default. And here I'm not going to go into any kind of political point scoring. Suffice it to say that for a variety of reasons, we all know we were at the verge of default. And uh, I cannot thank Almighty's infinite blessings and mercy. In Paris, we struck a deal with the uh, uh, MD IMF, and that's how Pakistan, through a standby agreement, saved the day. And then this year, uh, through very comprehensive dialogue with IMF, our government has been able to uh, get this 37-month-long uh, uh, program approved by IMF in September this year. And uh, one main thing is clear, that uh, it had to bring more hardship to the people of Pakistan. Well, we had no choice. And I pray to God Almighty that let this be the last time we would ever engage with IMF and never again easier said than done. It requires a very comprehensive plan. Uh, I'm inshallah going to unroll it in the next uh, few days. Had it not been for these dharnas and uh, chaos in Islamabad, I would have done it uh, a few days earlier. But uh, plans, we have seen plans over 76 years in our history. Brilliant plans. But what was missing was the will to do, the will to implement it in letter and spirit. And I think I want to, uh, in all humanity, want to share with you that this will be a plan called Homegrown Plan. And I want to uh, make this uh, categorical statement before uh, this August Assembly of uh, uh, Brilliant Pakistanis and through these cameras to the four nook and corner of Pakistan to 250 million Pakistanis that uh, I will do my best along with my colleagues to implement this plan in little spirit and transform Pakistan's economic landscape Again, easier said than done. It would require blood and sweat, a journey, a long journey, a thorny journey of hard work and untiring efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, another point I'd like to mention, that uh, today, other than our economic challenge, is our uh, security challenge. And this is scaring in our faces like never before. We all know, and I think our uh, memories are refresh with those uh, stories of gallantry and, and uh, brave soldiers of Pakistan Army, law enforcing agencies, civilians, politicians, doctors, nurses, skilled workers, children, mothers, from every walk of life, people sacrificed to defeat terrorism and it was something uh, a challenge uh, which was really one of the toughest challenge in our history but during uh, PM Nawaz Sharif's government Pakistan brave armed forces law enforcing agencies Pakistan brave people traders doctors engineers politicians they defeated this menace uh, hands down but in the process the nation paid a huge price 80,000 people were martyred and our economic losses uh, touched a figure of 130 billion dollars of course we got uh, a fraction of uh, of uh, these losses when I say fraction I believe not more than 10 or 15 percent. Rest Pakistan had to bear for 
from its scarce resources, its own coffers, and we didn't have the space to bear this huge loss. But what an irony of fate that this monster has come back. It is showing this ugly face again. And as I speak on a daily basis, there is a sad incident in south of KP, in Balochistan. There is a anti-Pakistan nefarious elements are driving this uh, nefarious scheme over there through uh, active support of Pakistan's enemies and uh, as if this is not enough what happened in Parachanar just a few days ago innocent Pakistanis were butchered by both sides and as if this was not enough there was uh, Lashkar Kashi on Islamabad and thousands of people were marching with uh, guns in their hands and lots of other kind of ammunition to create all kind of uh, uncertainty and chaos which they really wanted to destroy this uh, hard-earned stability in terms of bringing down our inflation rate from 32% last year to less than 7% as I speak. Our exports gradually uh, increasing, our uh, remittances gradually increasing, IT exports a big surge, stock exchange skyrocketing. This is what people of Pakistan have been dreaming and demanding for ages and this is what anti-Pakistan elements and enemies of Pakistan want to really destroy. So there is a, a very limited choice and option and the only option is that no matter what we have to commit all our energies and our resources towards promoting Pakistan's economic well-being. So ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't want to go into a long-winded speech Suffice it to say that together we have to protect Pakistan's future, together we have to march, march forward and this can only happen through unity of thought and action, Pakistan, Pahindabad. So with your permission, uh, we can take three questions and we'll request you for the collective answer of three questions. First, Faisal, sir, please. Take it. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Faisal, Faisal Malik from Karachi. I'm a professional. So what is our plan to, for an equitable sort of resource allocation uh, on all the sectors and moving away from a rent-seeking economy to a rent-free economy? 